All right, frontline prevention of system-induced disability. This is something that's near and dear to my heart because way too many people in America are disabled. And we all know if you're an occupational health nurse, if somebody gets injured at work, those rates skyrocket. I got hurt at work, therefore I don't have to work the rest of my life. Now, if you fell off your front porch, that wouldn't happen. Am I right? You'd get up, have a big old bruise, and life would go on. But if it happens at work, you're pretty much destined for weeks and weeks and weeks and months and years to become disabled. So as occupational health nurses, oh, by the way, I'm an occupational health nurse specialist, case manager and also a certified legal nurse consultant. I have my own um, legal nurse consultant company. So I work on both sides of the work comp thing and even though I'm on sometimes the bad side, it occurs to me that it's wrong. But what attorney won't take a case, right? Even if they know they did it. So. My point here today is to teach you how not to let that happen. So let's go on to this fella. This fella returned to work after being shot 14 times. You know, you got any people like that who've had that problem? I mean, come on, that's a serious injury. He was back to work within a year and a half. Shot 14 times, motivation, is everything and this guy I'm gonna play the story now sorry I can't make it bigger but it is really well his neighbor shot him 14 times and while doctors told this College Park firefighter and medic that he'd never return to work again he's defied the odds yeah, after nearly two years he is back on the job uh, Fox Eyes Nathalie Pozo has a story and you'll see only on Fox 5 I just thought in my mind, like, okay, I'm all about to die. That was College Park firefighter and medic Eddie Baker more than two years ago. Rescue one received. And this is him now. Getting back to this point is almost unheard of. And I wish I could think of the words to express how happy I am. The 11-year veteran's neighbor shot him 14 times in December of 2014. That man, Taylor Carthren, is now serving a 20-year sentence. The baker says the bullets hit him in the chest, spine, and arm, and he suffered a broken femur, shoulder, jaw, seven broken fingers, and tendon damage, resulting in 10 surgeries. Doctors told Baker he would never be able to return to work. I would always ask, you know, is it ever going to be a chance where I'll be able to get back to the fire department? And they always told me no. Um, and it was heartbreaking every single time. But he would not take no for an answer, crediting his faith. <laughs> and his family, including his now 11-year-old daughter, Kaylin, for keeping his fight alive. She always thought that I was gonna be able to come back, and she would tell me every day, you know, so if you're sitting around here, it's time to get up and do your exercises. Baker went through rigorous, sometimes unbearable rehab, learning how to walk again. And after two years of difficult work, he was able to come back to the firehouse. His co-workers, who he calls brothers, were there every step of the way. He's the crazy one of the crew. and. Uh, once he got back, he just stepped right back into that role. And while Baker was gone, he never missed a paycheck, thanks to the support from the city. Everyone donated um, uh, probably over two years of uh, vacation time to him, so he did not miss a check while he was out. He's a model employee, um, so I would say uh, yeah, he means a whole lot to us. Everything we do around here is with love, especially for each other. And the camaraderie is amazing. In College Park, Nathalie Pozo, Fox 5 News. Okay, this guy had everything positive going for him. Supportive family, a kid saying, get off the couch, Dad. You're starting to worry me. Is this College Park, Georgia? Yes. Yeah. Really? Yeah, that's where it was. So anyway, his kid's saying, get off the couch. His co-workers are calling every day. They're donating vacation time. There seems to be a brotherhood in this fire department. So you've got co-worker support. This guy was motivated to come back to work. Often things that we don't have 
where we work. I mean, how many of the people that you work with go, this is a brotherhood. You know, we're a team. They'll mouth it, but how many really feel that way? Is this going to work? You should. Ta da! Maybe? Okay, hold that thought. Did it work? Oh my god, it's gone. No, it's not. It's gone. Edition slide. She already did that. She asked, What is system induced disability? It's the system, it's the first person that sees them. And sometimes that can be you guys. And it goes all the way through to the lawyer they finally get and the judge who says, yes, you're totally disabled. Would it be the culture of the company as they well? Tried everything. The culture of the company is a big one. And that starts a lot of times with the medical department. Unfortunately, because you guys are the first people that see these people and you set the expectation. So we're going to go through that. Notice that HR was relevant in the big role. Most of your people are going to have seen HR 10 times before they ever get to you. Yes. <laughs> Most of them have HR issues. Does everybody find that true? You know, if you've got somebody who's going to go out for a long time, they're three days away from losing their job. Well, in, our, in the case of our company, I've seen twice where HR kept them out as long as they could. They don't want them back because they're, that's right, they're a pain in the butt. That is so true. Yes! Yes! Thank you. Oh, it's a miracle worker. Bless you. Can I make it go back? I gotta take it all the way back to the beginning. Can you do that? <laughs> we don't want to watch the movie, but we do want to get back to about the point. Slide. Guys, we ever did that. The video right here. Is it? Yeah. Is it a video? I can see a blank screen. Yeah, that's because this one has a disability. That was the next thing? Or is it just because of this? Or your next one? Back, back, or forward. The arrow. Back up one more slide. One at a time. There. No. Now, if you want to go yeah. forward, you will the other way. Yay! All right. Yes. This could be it. We're alive. Okay. So, does anybody have any questions before I go forward? Okay. We just want to get it done, right? Okay. Impairment. You got to know the difference between being impaired versus being disabled. That's the very beginning. Impairment definition for according to the AMA is deviation or loss of any body. So let's say you got osteoarthritis, you got bad knees. You are impaired. Because it takes you a little time to get off the floor if you're down there. You know, and it helps if you got something to pull on to get up. That's impaired. Okay. Just like I said, everybody has a medical diagnosis in this room. Oh, you're I'm good. sorry. <laughs> Did that not work no, she said it didn't work. It's my day. It's my day. That's okay. I'm going on a private tour of New Orleans this afternoon. I don't give a damn. I'm just having a good time. So, yeah, I got something to look forward to. Okay, so that's impairment. Disability, on the other hand, is something entirely different. Most of our people don't fall underneath disability. 
This means a person cannot meet either a personal or an occupational demand because of an impairment. Now, you see guys in wheelchairs, people with artificial legs, they're impaired, but they are meeting their obligations. Now, the SSA, a little bit stricter, Social Security Administration does not try to give our money away despite how we all see people pulling into the handicap parking space and go, my God, they just jumped out of there and walked into Walmart. But they try not to. Most everyone, and I've represented Social Security cases, you're denied that first three times right out of the gate. They don't even, I mean, I don't even think they read the first things that go in. Denial letter comes back real quick. Submit an appeal, second denial letter. Submit another appeal, third denial letter, get a lawyer. Then you've got to go before a judge. So Social Security is much stricter about this than we are. And some of our long-term disability insurers and workers comp, they're not very strict at all. So any substantial gainful activity, and I know you've all heard this, it's the Walmart greeter thing. Can he stand at the front door and hand someone a cart and say, welcome to Walmart? That's, that's the standard. If they can do that, they are not disabled. So Social Security, and it's got to last. You know, it can't be I'm down, i got a sore throat. I really couldn't do that this week. It's got to go on for a long time. If any of you guys want this PowerPoint, I've got a notebook up here. Just give me your email and I'll send it to you. Okay, attitudes are the real disability. And we all know that from having worked with people. You'll have someone severely injured who will show up for work three days later. I had a lady break her back. I had her back in a Milwaukee cast three days later. You know, she wanted that job and she wanted it desperately and she did fine. I mean, she fell off a building about 15 <coughs> feet. That was when I was at GE. So, attitude is everything, both yours and the person who's injured. Excuse me? Mm-hmm. Attitude is, you know, everything. They also don't even speak to the person's context. Like, we don't know if she's been on that job. We don't know if she has been on child health and disabled, but she feels like she has to. Uh -huh. So, I think it kind of takes a way that it's not, like, an individual attitude about the person, mm -hmm. and maybe as a social context that makes them just good for the job and makes them feel bad, then they, they make them back to the job. Mm -hmm. It doesn't necessarily mean they feel the person to be there. Well, with her, she did. Maybe for her, yes, mm -hmm. but I think, but as practitioners in family, we just assume that all of our patients just have that attitude. And don't no, that no, you can never assume that. There's always something else going on. There's always, what I call the tipper, can you guys hear me over there? I'll try to project. There's the tipper. You have somebody. Oh, you have somebody who will do just fine. They've got some sort of chronic disease or whatever. And then all of a sudden something tips them into disability. You know, whether it's a conversation with an HR person whether it's a person on their team that they're not liking now, someone who's transferred in, there's some tolerance point at which people get who say, I'm not taking this anymore. It's what I call a tipping point. If you can find that tipping point, you can cut a lot of these short. But there is always a tipping point. Okay, slippery slide into disability, or the short-term disability sliding right on into the long-term disability. It begins with an initial injury or event, whether it is mental stress, whether it is falling off a building. It begins with some sort of initial injury. And I laughed when I put this incident reported up here. How many of you get an incident report immediately? Anyone? Oh, you did? How? <laughs> they have to do it. Instead of in the end, it's a fair referral. They have to go for that. Ah, so they have to stop with you. What if they get, um, mm, let's say they're on a weekend when no one's there? What do they do? 
Monday morning they report to security. Uh huh. So they report it to security then on the day it happens, right? Now let's suppose they didn't. What do you do? Okay. So and by then, what's usually happen? Yeah. And then what's usually happen? Right, right, Sedgwick is good. Yeah. So, yeah. And by then, unfortunately, sometimes you've lost control. I'm sorry? It's an OSHA reportable, they get medication. Yeah, it's a done deal. It's a done deal, and you're buying it. Yeah, control is good. Says all the nurses who are control freaks, right? Yeah, control is good. That's one of those against a rock and a hard spot, isn't it? <laughs> and, and yeah. Facility, if they didn't report right now, where do you work at? I work at one of the Honeywell sites. Is that what state? That's the employee consensus, and it is one of the rules. You've got to report it right away. My husband works for the railroad. You've got to report it right away when it happens, or you broke the rule, and you're in trouble. Aha. Uh -huh. That's that's a good one. I like that. Yeah. Uh-huh. Right. Uh-huh. That's good. Oh, did everybody on this side of the room hear that? She was saying that she works for a company where they have an app for your iPhone, iPad, and all of that. So if you have an event, you can go onto your phone and report it right away, and it shoots right to that department. That They have a lot of remote employees, which they can't get to. And if anybody does retail for a large place, you got the same thing going on, too. So that, that is great. Okay, so they're entering the work comp system now or the STD system. The provider generally, as everyone said here, is the emergency room, right? How many Oc Health doctors do you see in an emergency room? No, most of them are rotating through, right? I mean, they're not even permanent. Get, you try to get somebody to go back to a doctor in an emergency room and get a return to work, it so ain't gonna happen. You know, it's just not. The doctor may never be there again. They were rotating through. So by the time they got to the emergency room, like uh, someone like back here said, it's a done deal. You bought it. Okay. Now, we've got them taken care of. They've got their medication. They're home on the couch with their leg up, resting. They broke their leg or something like that. Now, we're going to hit them with all these things you've got to do. You've got to do them. You got to contact your adjuster, and contact your adjuster means you got to call four times, leave four different messages. A couple of days later, your adjuster calls you back, right? That's usually the way it is. I, I've never heard anyone call me and say, "Yeah, I called the adjuster, and she was so nice, and we got that all taken care of." Usually, the adjusters are just as busy as we are. They get their voicemail because they're on the phone all day long, so they experience delays. Delays and disgust with the system then, you know, what's the use? I can't get anybody, nobody calls me back. This is a waste of time. I'm tired of fooling with them. They can call me. And at that point, you virtually lost them. Okay, now, what can we do? For many people, since we're Oc Health nurses, we may, oh miracle of miracles, be the first person they see. Has that ever happened to anyone? That someone's walked into your office injured? Isn't that a good feeling? Yes, they came to me, yes. So they walk into your office, you're the first person that they see. Okay. 
So as the first person that they see, we have to set that expectation. You are going to be back to work within a certain amount of time. Now, I'm sorry, this is just a blatant pitch, but does anybody here use the official disability guidelines? Are those awesome? I mean, are they awesome? Talk about evidence-based medicine. You pull that puppy up, it will tell you how quick that person should be back to work, so you're not guessing about that. So, why do you not want to promote people being disabled? All of this information, and I'll let you read it, I'm not going to read it off to you, comes straight from the CDC. This is a bad thing. You don't want to disable people, ever, ever, for any reason. I don't care how bad off they are. Do not disable them. You've ruined their life. You've ruined their family's life. They'll never have health insurance. They will never get life insurance in case something happens to them. You've virtually ruined their life. I mean, you have cut their income in half. It is not a good thing. Plus, you put them at higher risk for heart attack, cardiovascular disease, because let's face it, laying around on the couch is not what they call healthy. Okay, here are some things that can tell you whether or not that person is going to wind up being a hard one to get back to work. History. Is this their first injury? And there are great ways you can use your adjuster to find that out, especially if they're a fairly new employee, because they can go back and look countless years. Insurance companies have gotten smart. They track these people. They go back and look, okay, well, at such and such place, they were out for four months. At such and such place, they were out for six weeks. So check into their history, bond with your adjuster, and find out what that report says. Ah, sorry. Thank you. Thank you for being my reminder. I'm so bad about that. Okay, and what do they believe in? Is the belief that I got injured at work, you owe me. You owe me. I got injured at work. I showed up. I was doing my job. I was doing what I was supposed to do. And you hurt me. So do they believe that? I mean, and most of us sort of have a relationship with our employees. We know what the thought processes are. We've talked to them when they've had a sore throat or whatever. 